Hello and welcome to Writing On Games. Maybe it's three years of doing this YouTube thing, but I'm finding it harder and harder to get truly excited about games nowadays, to share in the fervour around titles people are holding up as massive leaps forward in the medium, to get lost in the totality of an experience without breaking it down to its naked systems for some kind of video. It's why my channel has mainly focused on older games this year, trying to find the spark that more recent titles just aren't giving me. They're either too slow in their movement, monotonous in their side content, or self-serious in their storytelling for me to fully get on board with. Seems like this year the best I can come up with is some kind of relief that I'll at least have something to talk about come Game of the Year time. It was a similar set of expectations I had going into Spider-Man, even after getting my hands on a short demo at Gamescom. Another game that everyone is hyping to hell and back, that everyone claimed would capture the seemingly elusive essence of a decade and a half old title, and one that, coming away from my demo, felt decidedly okay, with little to separate it from the most typical of the genre. The map starts off foggy, but gradually becomes clearer as you discover towers. The barrage of map markers consists of various types of identical base liberations, featuring combat that sees you repeatedly hitting square, coupled with the occasional circle, and collectathons that seemingly make little sense in context and serve no purpose towards the game's main story. But then you'll select one of the many fast travel points that appear on the map and suddenly the game's movement grinds to a halt as we cut to Spider-Man engaging in a boring commute, dealing with the same kind of weirdos we all deal with on public transport, making small talk if necessary. All the while you begin to think, with the load times of my base PS4, I'm fairly sure this takes about as much time as utilising my web swinging abilities. And then you start to realise that the game might be in on the joke and everything maybe starts to make a little bit more sense, that the options to play Spider-Man like any other open open world game are there, but to do so might be to miss the point of it all. Because here we have a game that, despite some critics decrying its adherence to a lot of the same design methodologies as many of the safest AAA titles out there, some I flat out don't enjoy, manages to marry its systems to the youthful energy of our web-slinging hero to the point that all I could experience while playing was something I haven't felt about a game in a good while, sheer, unadulterated joy. It's a game that made me ecstatic about something as seemingly trivial as its traversal method, where other games had me plodding from mission to mission. It had me smiling from ear to ear, interacting with NPCs in a way that didn't involve slicing them open or a bunch of snarky jibes. It had me giddy about a multifaceted story whose over-the-top, feel-good sense of humour balanced out the heft of its more serious moments, evoking a childlike thrill for what dumb new suit I would unlock next, as well as leaving me surprisingly gripped by the character study those suits were a part of. It's a joy that's clear from the game's intro, where you begin to seamlessly swing, zip and wall run across the sun-kissed cityscape in a way very similar to how you did a decade ago, except this time with all the little animation details afforded by a more modern engine. Peter playfully twists and turns as he runs, quips as he backflips and treats the crest of any swing as one might treat the slow incline of a roller coaster before the big drop specifically with the anxious excitement of how fast you're going to go on the way down. But it's not just pretty to look at, swinging is nowhere near as automatic a process as the trailers or my demo made it seem. Sure, you can hold R2 and bask in the spectacle of reaching the top of your swing, letting go and diving to the street below, or you could make use of things like the game's point launch feature, springboarding you off of the edge of buildings with a satisfying boom matching the momentum it generates. It means that your goal is less arcing as high and low as you can, but more maintaining high speeds in as straight a line as you can. It's a system that made me want to move around for movement's sake in a way I haven't felt since the original Crackdown. It frames the city not just as an appealing backdrop, but as a jungle gym, with all the youthful adventure you associate with conquering one as a kid. Suddenly that distance marker popping up informing me of the 3000 meter gap between our hero and the goons he's totally not killing doesn't fill me with the dread it would in, say, Metal Gear Solid 5. Instead, my eyes light up with the possibilities of how I can get there. 
Put it this way, in most open world games, traversal is often treated as an afterthought, a means to an end. The further away something is, the more time you have to kill between the objectives which form the meat of the game. Travelling between waypoints is maybe your main form of interaction in open world games, the genre being defined by your ability to go wherever you please. And yet so many titles make it feel like needless time killing at best and an absolute chore at worst. The opposite is true here, you're not traversing long distances in order to get to the next story beat. Movement is a key part of Spider-Man's character, it's arguably the defining characteristic of his powers. By going to the effort of making what other games treat as a necessary system so mechanically gratifying, the movement itself, the animations associated with it, it all becomes a part of that story, directly illustrating Peter's good-willed, fun-loving nature despite the chaos ensuing around him. But if the swinging makes you feel like Spider-Man to use fairly common review parlance, then the script, from the main narrative to the dumb jokes Spider-Man tells as he swings and often clever little lore tidbits you find in backpacks, makes Peter Parker feel like a regular human being. One whose biggest problem isn't always saving the world, maybe it's finding a place to crash at very short notice, or agonising over the individual wording of a text message trying to figure out someone's intent. The scenarios you're presented with are often relatable with low stakes, but almost always fun and funny because, well, you're swinging around as Spider-Man while you navigate the mundanity of some twenty-somethings personal life. The weird environmental missions effectively highlight Peter's canonically more scientific side, but they also have you conducting said science by throwing yourself off of buildings at high speeds. In each situation, you're presented with an inherently comedic contradiction, meaning that the game's sense of humour isn't purely a product of Peter's charming witticisms. It's in your actions as well, how you physically navigate Spidey through these moments, serving as a reminder that writing in games goes beyond the text on a screen, it's in how everything surrounding those words is contextualised. The pause menu isn't some abstract thing for example, it's part of the world, it's an interruption. It's Peter trying to figure out his next move, upgrading his suit powers and plotting map markers all the while trying to focus on what people are saying, and his breathless apologies to those he's calling, asking them to carry on once he's done fiddling with the menu, play into the thematic core of his character, that he's trying to focus on a million different things at once to be there for everyone at all times to an often self-destructive degree, that perhaps his jokes are a deflection from the more serious issues he needs to face in his life. It's a simple touch, but one that more naturally allows the game to tell a quote-unquote serious story without needing to wallow in self-seriousness, without needing to be dark and gritty and one-dimensional in order to show us what it means to be human under the most dire of circumstances. What Spider-Man shows us is that you can still have these emotionally charged moments of cathartic rage and sadness, as well as a focus on levity, and maybe those more serious moments will hit harder because you maintained that balance, because you widened that potential emotional spectrum. Because I mean, hey, is there not something inherently human to making light of potentially bad situations? Is it not easier to root for Peter in his fight against his personal demons because he's shown to live up to his title as the friendly neighbourhood Spider-Man, the one that high-fives people in the street as well as beats up bad guys in glorious swashbuckling combat? To me, Peter is multidimensional in a way few game protagonists are. He isn't singularly bogged down in either anger or sadness feeling sorry for himself. He has a job to do, an apartment to find, jokes to tell. It all meant that I was able to be as invested in Peter's emotional realisations and the moral complexities of the villains as much as I was able to get lost in the glee of how I'd swing around and defeat them, of thinking, oh cool, as their suit designs were revealed. It's truly a best of all worlds approach. And you know, maybe there's a reason I've been focusing on the negatives in games I've been playing lately. When things work, especially in such a technical medium as games, they work in part because the mechanics behind it all are blurred. It's easy to dwell on negatives because they're easy to spot. The concept of immersion breaks and by its very nature, that means something sticks out. Something feels off. Similarly, being made to feel like Spider-Man is for sure an annoyingly abstract phrase, but you see it used so much in reviews because it's hard to accurately quantify when that feeling lies within such a tried and tested mechanical framework. 
I spent several drafts, countless hours writing and rewriting and rewriting again trying to detail it myself, and this is the best I could come up with. And while it's ironically proven so stressful to gush about a game I love, that's only because Spider-Man allowed me to do something I haven't been able to do for a long time, something I've desperately missed, to put a disc in a console and lose myself in the resulting experience. So I hope you enjoyed my video on Spider-Man. As I hinted at in the piece, videos like this take a long time to research, write, rewrite, record, edit, the whole process. So I'd just like to thank my unbelievably generous patrons for allowing me to dedicate the time necessary to make it all happen. If you like the videos and feel like you have the means, maybe check it out. Every pledge helps more than you can possibly know. Special thanks go to Mark B. Writing, Rob, Michael Wolfe, Artyom Vitsuk, Timothy Jones, Laserpferd, Cole Mendel, Spike Jones, The Nameless Guy, Chris Wright, Dr. Motorcycle, Ham Migas, Travis Bennett, Zach Casserly, Samuel Pickens, Tom Nash, Shardfire, Philip Lange, Anna Pimentel, Jesse Ryan, Brandon Robinson, Justin's Holderness, Nico Blakely, Matthew Natchery, Christian Kuneman, Camel Traffic, Nicholas Ross and Charlie Yang. And with that, this has been another episode of Writing on Games. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.